Oil, otherwise known as dinosaur juice and black gold. Yep, that's right. The black, sticky stuff that powers our cars, builds our infrastructure and destroys oceans and wildlife is going through a little bit of a phase at the moment. Oil companies want to keep squeezing as much profit as possible, keeping oil usage up whilst the world wants to step away from fossil fuels. But why are everyday investors guilty of contributing to this problem? Passive index funds. The scary thing is the oil industry knows this and they're taking advantage, but with oil being the most valuable commodity on earth, passive index fund investors like me and you are in for an interesting ride. But firstly, a history lesson on oil and the US dollar. Back in the day after World War II, the US dollar had to be backed up by equal amounts in gold in American vaults, which is what gave the US dollar power. And in 1971, Richard Nixon took USD off the gold standard. Now, some say it was because the US was running out of gold, and this is what drove the decision. However, just two years later, it was linked to something more valuable than the world relies on, oil. During the 1973 Arab-Israeli Yom Kippur War, Arab members of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, imposed an embargo against the United States in retaliation for the US decision to resupply the Israeli military and to gain leverage in the post-war peace negotiations. Arab OPEC members also extended the embargo to other countries that supported Israel, including the UK, the Netherlands, Canada and more. The embargo both banned petroleum exports to targeted nations and introduced cuts in oil production. Several years of negotiations between oil producing nations and oil companies had already destabilized and a decades old pricing system which exacerbated the embargo's effects. The United States desperately needed to stabilize the price of oil to end the crisis and in 1974 the US struck a deal with the Saudis to protect them as well as provide them arms. The US got something more valuable which was access to oil and one extra little sweet bonus. Saudi Arabia agreed to conduct trade in US dollars and today 80% of oil is traded and done in the US dollars because of this deal struck in 1974. This resulted in the oil economy being stable and has given the US stability and power for a long time. And here we are in 2022. The world is trying to rely less on oil more and more as we swap to move to electric powered cars, use less plastic and think more about the planet, sustainability and global warming from greenhouse emissions. There's a huge looming problem for passive investors. A lot of the active investors in the market are picking and choosing their stocks and slowly but surely making their way out of oil and gas, sometimes going after greener schemes that are becoming more popular and profitable. The problem is that for the oil and gas industry, this is bad. They need investment to keep going and bolstering their stock prices and ultimately all for profit. With active investors moving away for greener tech, this leaves the slower passive investment index funds that normal retail investors have their money in. In a lot of cases, people will be completely unaware that their portfolios, that they have weighted percentages in these big oil and gas companies. Ultimately, in the future, if these more passive index funds aren't properly managed, there is a risk in the future when we hit the tipping point where oil is less desirable than green tech if the passive investors don't get out of those, their funds will go down with it. Now, naturally, index funds are incredibly diversified to mitigate this risk, but it doesn't stop some funds going down if this happened. Let's explore the risk in more detail. BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager with almost 8 trillion US dollars in funds under management. It's been bulking up on ESG oriented investments, which is environmental, social and governance, over the past year, and perhaps more recently, it recently signaled that it would be lending a more sympathetic ear to activist shareholder groups that are challenging boards of directors at companies in polluting industries. And an increasingly large number of such groups have been pressuring oil firms and others to do more to prepare for the coming transition to clean energy. Not because it's the right thing to do, although to be fair, that is certainly a part of their arguments, but because the board's business as usual attitudes threaten the company's bottom lines. ExxonMobil recently announced a half-hearted plan to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions, a move that activists and analysts scorned as totally inadequate. A 15 to 20% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions over nine years is not an ambitious target. 
The Commonwealth think tank believe that the growing influence of passive funds on the economy cannot be ignored, as they become the holders of last resort of the fossil fuel sector. The research by Commonwealth found that passive funds now represent more than 40% of fund ownership of fossil fuels, offering a direct threat to the transition to a decarbonised future. The report, authorised by Chris Hayes and senior research fellow Adrian Buller, said the backwards-looking nature of mainstream index funds means that the passive investments remain exposed to oil and gas firms, maintaining their share value while others divest. It is identified in a small cohort of asset management giants, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street Global Advisors and Fidelity, that have ridden a wave of enthusiasm for passive investing and now come to dominate the shareholder structure. And here's the big scan. New reports issued this month, one last week by a coalition of four non-governmental organisations, finds that the fossil fuel industry is now the only sector in which passive allocations represent more than 40% of the fund ownership, as actively managed funds slowly reduce their investments in the industry. Data from Reclaim Finance shows that BlackRock, Allianz Global Investors and Vanguard are the three biggest managers with the biggest exposure to coal developers. For the oil and gas sector, it's Vanguard, BlackRock, Allianz Global Investors and JP Morgan with the largest bond exposure. And a lot of these firms are making promises at surface level not to put active investments into carbonized companies. However, the report shows that asset managers' fossil fuel investment policies are still largely failing to cover passive allocations. Around 17 trillion of assets are managed passively by the top 30 firms and none apply their carbon exclusion policies to all of these assets. So what could happen in the future? Well, surely we're going to hit a challenging pivotal moment as more active investors step away from carbon heavy companies and the sector as a whole and the passive funds begin to dominate more than half the holdings. They hit a crucial trap that will be unescapable. Vanguard, Fidelity, BlackRock and the other funds can't then just back out and invest their money elsewhere. If they did, they'd totally collapse the oil and gas market and along with it, our money where there are small investments made. So if they don't want to risk creating large losses for their customers, their only option is to stay in the market as more active investors get out. The big firms have to stay invested in the polluting sectors, either that or it causes a max exodus of retail investors pulling the money again if that happened en masse and that would be hugely damaging due to the control the big index investment firms have put through passive funds. Check out your own investments. You might not think that your investments are in oil, gas and coal but if you look closely the weightings are there. Take VUSA for example, one of the really popular Vanguard index funds which spreads its money across the S&P 500. 1.17% of your money is invested into ExxonMobil, and 0.92% is in Chevron with lots more smaller holdings distributed across its portfolio. And that's part of the problem. Index fund investing is fantastic, it's easy and it's accessible, but it means that you can be lazy and a lot of people don't realise where their money is actually invested. Sure, a lot of people know it's invested in the top 500 companies, but don't actually stop to think what that actually means. And thus, the cycle begins. Passive investors stay stuck in the market, active investors pull out, prices go down, and we're sort of damned if we do and damned if we don't at that point. It's a little bit of a lose-lose scenario. And I think it'll be interesting to see over the next few years which direction Vanguard, BlackRock, Fidelity and the others take in regards to their funds and carbon policies, but it's definitely one to watch out for. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the top beginner Vanguard investors mistakes in this video here. You'll learn tons about what not to do when investing into index funds. Click here and I'll see you in the next video.